want to highlight the tax policy measures for the financial 2022-23 budget, which are contained in the finance bill 2022. I will also highlight custom measures that Kenya will be presenting for consideration by the East African community ministers responsible for finance and economic affairs in the pre-budget consultation plan for May uh, this year. These custom measures will become effective from 1st July 2022. Mr. Speaker, the proposed measures contained in the Finance Bill 2022 are expected to generate an additional 10 shilling 50.4 billion to the Exchequer for the financial 2022-2023 budget. Mr. Speaker, as well indicated in this statement, we consulted other partner states in the South African community, and Kenya was allowed to present its budget statement earlier than the other partner states. With regards to customs measures, we have evaluated various proposals that we intend to submit for consideration during the East African Community Pre-Budget Consultation by the EAC Ministers for Finance, which will be held later in May this year. The measures that will be agreed upon will be communicated through the EAC Gazette and implemented from 1st July uh, this year. Mr. Speaker, these measures are generally meant to promote our manufacturing sector and enhance our exports by making inputs and raw materials used in the manufacture of goods <clears throat> more affordable, hence lowering the cost of production. In addition, some of the measures are aimed at enhancing the competitiveness of locally manufactured goods <coughs> through protection from unfair competition by imported goods. Some of the custom measures are also geared towards protecting of critical sectors of our economy, like agriculture, from unfair competition occasioned by importation of products that can be produced by our gallant farmers. In cases where local production does not meet our demand, the government will ensure the deficit is met in an orderly manner that does not adversely affect our farmers. Mr. Speaker, I now turn to the proposed amendments under the Value Added Tax Act. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic and the ensuing socioeconomic implications on Kenyans continue to impose a heavy burden on our health sector. In this regard, I have proposed more incentives to the sector by exempting from VAT plant and machinery for use by manufacturers of pharmaceutical products. Mr. Speaker, the government has been progressively addressing the cost of health care in the country so as to expand access to quality and affordable healthcare services. To further reduce the healthcare cost, I propose to exempt from VAT medical oxygen supplied to registered hospitals, urine bags, adult diapers, artificial breasts, and colostomy or elastomy bags for medical use. Mr. Speaker, assembly of motor vehicles and manufacture of motor vehicle parts locally has gained traction in order to encourage more investment, especially in the manufacture of passenger motor vehicles locally, I propose to exempt from VAT inputs and raw materials used in the manufacture of passenger motor vehicles. Additionally, I propose to exempt lo locally manufactured passenger motor vehicles from VAT. Mr. Speaker, charitable organizations play an important role of supporting the vulnerable members of the society. Currently, Entities that make cash donations to charitable organizations that are registered under either the Societies Act or the Non-Governmental Organization Coordination Act are allowed to deduct the cash donations from their taxable income. However, entities that donate cash to charitable organizations that are not registered under the two acts are not allowed to deduct such donations from their taxable income. To address this challenge, I propose to amend the Income Tax Act to allow all entities that donate cash to charitable organizations to deduct the donations from their taxable income. Mr. Speaker, Kenya has witnessed significant growth in the use of financial directives, including aging, futures, and options. However, there is no provision in the Income Tax Act to, to charge the gains accruing from the financial directives to non-residents. To ensure equity and fairness, I propose to amend the Income Tax Act to provide for the taxation of, gain, 
taxation of gains accruing to the non-residents through the transaction volume financial relatives in Kenya.